How has Blake Wesley been with the Austin Spurs? And should Sohan get invited to the NBA Rising Stars? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kings 5 San Antonio. TGIF, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great Friday. Getting ready for your weekend. Almost there. Almost there. Weekend's upon us. But what are we talking about today? We're going to be looking at Jeremy Sohan and asking, should the NBA, or should he just have a spot on the upcoming NBA All-Star event, the Rising Stars Challenge? We're going to be talking about that. Does he deserve it? What might hold him back? Also, how has Blake Wesley been with the Austin Spurs and much, much more? This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Talents. And we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts. Let's go to bring him on. He is our guest. He's back from the from missing in action. But it's actually good news. It's actually there's a good reason why he's been missing in action. He is Joe Garcia with Two Shots Podcast. Now, why he's been missing in action? Because he has a new job. Way to go, Joe. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, good news, bad news. New, good news is I have a new job. The other part of it, while I've been a little bit, you know, not as uh let's say active on social media and active like we're recording episodes of two shots is yeah. my dad's getting a little older. So he's, his health isn't all that great. So I've been trying to help him out a little bit more and spend more time with him. So just a little bit of, you know, behind the scenes kind of things going on. You're, 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 you're definitely keeping up with the Spurs, right? Oh yeah. I'm keeping up with the Spurs. Definitely. But I'm, I'm doing that in between taking dad to his appointments and making sure he, you know, he, he's not being as grumpy. As mm-hmm. he usually is, you know, trying to keep him happy too. So he's been watching the games with me too. So it's it's been it's been fun. I I you know I've known you for a while now. We've kind of got a your place. We've gone drinking before. And if your dad is grumpy, then you definitely did a one eighty because you're never really a grumpy guy. You're always kind of in a chipper mood. Yeah, no, my dad. Yeah, he's uh, he, as you, as you get older, you know, every little thing bothers you. Everything hurts, you know. And and on top of that, he's just not feeling too good, you know. So right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, man. It, it's just you know, I'm just trying to uh, keep him level headed. Let's put it like that. <laughs> well, hopefully, your dad gets a lot better. Uh, cross your fingers. I know everybody here at Locked On Spurs and fans, you know, are, you know, keeping their spirits high for you and your dad. And again, congratulations on the job. Way to go, man. That that that. No, thanks. Yeah, you. I had wondered where you had been. I think I reached out to you. I was like, "Where you been, Joe?" And that's when you laid it on me. Like, "Oh yeah, reason is because I got myself a new job." Yeah, so I'm working. <laughs> your hours are kind of whack, right? No, actually, um, like I work in the daytime. Um, so I'll work, you know, any, anywhere from like maybe eight thirty, sometimes nine, sometimes eight, depending on the needs, you know, of the company, mm-hmm. and then. Usually I'll probably wind up bouncing out between five thirty, six o'clock, you know. Um, so it's not all that bad, you know. Sometimes I'll have a day off in the middle of the week. Sometimes I might have to work a weekend here and there. But overall, I mean, you can't beat working from home, Jeff. It's not like I'm beating traffic oh, oh. to get yeah, to the office, you know. I love remote work life. I, I just enjoy it so much. But were you making the bucks, man? That means you could buy me uh, not one, but maybe two rounds of beers next time. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm working uh, more than one job, though, from home. I'm doing like, you know, tech support. And I'm also uh, gotten newly hired to be a podcast producer, too. So um, I'm doing a, I'm wearing a lot of hats lately. Well, we'll talk about that and a lot more. Right. Again, we're here with Joe Garcia with Two Shots Podcast. Follow him on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. Well, Joe, let's go ahead and dive into it. Jeremy Sohan, what can you say? Really good rookie season. Pretty good. His last few games have been eye-opening. He's doing it on both ends of the floor. Offensively, he's little by little. It's not dramatic, but knocking down the three. He's putting in double-figure score, and I think he's had a string of them right now as of this recording. And, of course, locking down and getting under the skin of NBA opponents. But, Joe, do you think he deserves a spot? on the upcoming NBA All-Star event, the Rising Stars Challenge. Now, basically what that does is, if you don't know, it's all the rookies and sophomores come together and play a game. Should he get invited, Joe? Absolutely. Why shouldn't he not get invited? You know, the kid's been really playing well. And, you know, you look to see what he's done over the, what, the last couple of games, and you look and see ever since the Golden State Warrior game, 
where the Spurs were back in the dome. He didn't have a good outing there. He only scored a dismal four points. But hey, he, he just had an off game. Ever since then, he's had double digit scoring every single night. And not only that, but his free throw shooting has gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. You know, even so, so much so that Coach Pop was talking about it. Now he's, he was averaging what I think now it's something of like 9.5 points per game, mm -hmm. you know, but if I'm looking, you know, after that Golden State Warrior game and set the versus Sacramento Kings, he scored 15 points against the Nets, 16 points against the Clippers, 16 points against the Portland Trailblazers, 18 points and the Spurs latest loss against the Lakers, 14 points, you know? So I'm like, and he shot 100% from the free throw line against the Lakers, now. but, but <laughs> he was a dismal one for one, Jeff. So he didn't go yeah, to the line a lot. So, Hey, yeah. he knocked, he's knocking them down though. Yeah. You look at his last three games, 16 points per game, 6.3 rebounds, three assists, just under one steal a game and shooting about 48% from the field. He's taking about three, three point shots. He's making about one to two. So he, again, the, Familiarity with the three line is coming along little by little, but it's not leaps and bounds. But just looking at those last rebounding, don't forget his rebounding. He's his rebounding, yeah, rebounding, uh, defensive rebounds up two point seven per game. The last three offensive rebounds. This is a, this is really good, Joe. Nearly four a game, four offensive rebounds, three point seven in the last three. So everybody, just keep in mind we're recording this before the Clippers game last night. So uh, obviously these numbers may uh, skew a bit, but that just gives you an idea of just how well he is playing. I agree with you, Joe. I do believe he will and he better get a spot on that Rising Stars Challenge event out in Utah for All-Star Game 2023. But Joe, do you think the Spurs' poor record will hurt him getting an invite? Um, I, I would say that it shouldn't really have an effect. They should base it not on the record, but on the performance of said player, mm -hmm. you know, and since yeah. he is a rookie, he's playing really well right now. They should base it on that. And of course, give him the nod to get into the rising stars challenge. Hey, but you know, that's just me being unbiased, being a, a diehard San Antonio Spurs fan. I wanted to hear what uh, Jimenez has to say. No, you no. know, he was the one well, that you, he you heard he apologized publicly, right? Well, it's kind of too little too late in my eyes because he was saying <laughs> in the beginning, he, he said that he was that Jeremy Sohan was never going to amount to anything. I'm sure uh -oh. Jeremy used Watch that as now. fuel to, yeah. to go ahead and prove Jimenez wrong. So I like to just throw that little bit of shade at Jimenez. Got nothing but love for you, Jimenez. I'm just playing around with you, man. Absolutely. But look, uh, in the as far as January is concerned, at least through 12 games played. So we're using a 12 game sample size here. Again, you know, he's, he's definitely showing he is worthy of that number nine pick at 10 points per game, 5.3 rebounds, 2.5 assists. You know, again, his three shot is not spectacular, but for his standards, currently shooting a career high during the month of January, 36%. So uh, again, little by little, it's going to start coming around. You just got to have patience. I, I, Joy, I agree. I don't think the Spurs' bad record will hurt Sohan. I think he deserves it. I recently had a chance to talk with Keldon Johnson about Sohan, and he said, oh, Jeff, I like Sohan's intangibles. I said, okay, well, Keldon, what do you mean by that? He's like, just everything he does defensively. So among, among his class, his rookie class, Sohan, that is, he is tops in a lot of good defensive stats. Now, before we get into them, Joe, would you think that he is the best Spurs defender or is that somebody else? I'd have to say that he probably is the best Spurs defender because let's be honest, Jeff, right now when you look at the San Antonio Spurs as a whole, as a team, they are the worst team in the NBA when it mm -hmm. comes to defense and probably looking to be the worst defensive team in the NBA, period. You know, their their stats aren't looking too well. But the the bright spot in all this is that you do have Jeremy Sohan playing quite well, not only on offense, but also on defense. And right now he is the best defender that the Spurs have. Absolutely. Now, again, speaking with Kelton Johnson recently, uh, he says that, Kel that uh, sorry, Kel not Kelton, uh, that um, Sohan puts in the time, he puts in the work, that he's showing that he has a lot of confidence and he has a bright future. Now, prior to the game versus the Lakers, among NBA rookies, Sohan was seventh in rebounds, 
ninth in total blocks, fifth in offensive rebounding, third in defensive field goals made. Defended field goals made, excuse me. So he's defending them. Yeah. He's led the team in rebound six games, in steals, I think about uh, eight games, and in blocks, nine games. He definitely deserves a spot. Will you be shocked, though, if he doesn't, if he doesn't get an invite? I would be shocked because I'd be like, why, why is the NBA – Turning its back on the Spurs, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. at least give Jeremy some love, man. I, I'd, I'd be surprised if they didn't go ahead and give him the the call up, you know, to get into the NBA Rising Stars Challenge. It it would be something that Spurs fans would go to Twitter on and, yeah. and want to go ahead and, and burn it to the ground because the NBA yeah, fans are rioting. Yeah. Love. yeah, fans are definitely rioting. But hey, we're not done talking about your silver and black. When we get back, we're going to shift gears and talk about another rookie, Blake Wesley. Uh, how has he been playing out in Austin? Yeah, we're going to get an update on how he is developing when the G League. We're talking with Joe Garcia of Two Shots Podcast. Follow him on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. But I want to talk to you about LinkedIn Talent Solutions. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools that go beyond the resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates, identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn jobs and connect them for fast and for free. LinkedIn jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality talent versus leading competitors. So what you got to do right now is go check out LinkedIn Jobs. It helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash LockedOnMBA, linkedin.com slash LockedOnMBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. You're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Joe Garcia with Two Shots Podcast. He's on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. Hopefully there will be another, there won't be another big gap from your next appearance, Joe, because we missed you here. Yeah, well, hopefully not. I mean, as long as we can record full disclosure, maybe on my lunch break again. I mean, we're we're good, Jeff. Yeah, because well, you got to make those bucks, Joe. Yeah, I got to make those you, bucks. I mean, you're pricing. you're going to be the next title sponsor of the AT and T Center. So once <laughs> once the AT and T Center goes down, it's going to be called the Joe Garcia Arena. No, nah, man, I like. I want it to be renamed the 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 Fred's Fish Fry Arena. That'd be just too much of a dream for people in San Antonio. For those of y'all who are not in San Antonio, Fred's Fish Fry is legendary. It's kind of iconic because it's been there forever. And even though it's been open doors forever, for some reason, nobody's ever there. You drive by any of these seafood places in San Antonio called Fred's Fish Fry, you'll likely not see anybody there. But they stay in business. But we're not going to speculate why. Yeah, and we're not going to speculate. But if you know, you know. (laughs) <laughs> if you know, you know. All right, Joe, let's go to dive into it. Another rookie we're going to put in the spotlight right now is Blake Wesley. Now, he did get recalled by the Spurs ahead of the Clippers game. So depending on when you listen to this, he may still be with the Spurs or he may have been sent back to Austin. But nevertheless, he really hasn't been in a lot of time in San Antonio. He's been cooking out in Austin. Now, Joe, you told me you have all his stats. What's he been looking like? What he's been showing? What do the numbers show? about his development in the G League. Well, currently right now, Blake Wesley, I mean, he's averaging 17.9 points a game, 3.8 rebounds, 2.5 assists. Um, you know, so he's he's overall he's not having a a bad outing over at the, you know, with the Austin Spurs and quite frankly, you know, being in the G League's good for the kid because if he was called up, you know, recalled again, you know, <laughs> to play with the San Antonio Spurs, He's probably just going to be right in the bench, you know, and that's not good for a rookie. I mean, you want to see him get some run. And right now, it just unfortunately, you know, the the rosters rosters kind of full and coach pop isn't giving the the rookie much run, <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah. at least him being competitive out there with, you know, in, in the, you know, with the Austin Spurs in the G League is good for him and, and him developing his game, which I think he's going to be a solid addition once they wind up uh, actually putting him into uh, the Spurs rotation. 
Uh, do do you think that's all it is right now? Is just a number slash roster thing that there's just too many guards ahead of them from you know obviously you know Trey Jones to you know Sohan. You throw him in there too because they've had him at point forward for a while. Do you think that's all it is? That or do you think it's really just the Spurs want to see him cook in Austin? I think pretty much that's probably all it is. You know, at, at this certain point in time is. You know, that, that's just comes down to the roster. And, and right now, you know, Coach Pop is running with the guys he's got. And, you know, unfortunately for Blake Wesley, I mean, he's had that injury. And Coach Pop is like, you know, we're, we're good at where we're at right now. Let's go ahead and give the young bucks some some run it with the uh, G League and let him, you know, kind of hone his skills a little bit. And when he comes back, when they recall him back, hopefully Coach Pop will play him uh, a little bit more, you know. So that's what you hope, you know, but. Either way, I, I I like this kid, man. From what I've seen from him in the summer league and in the small outing that we saw out of him when he started the season with the Spurs, mm-hmm. he was playing quite well, you know, and he's playing good again in the in the G League. So look forward to seeing what this young kid's going to be able to do uh, next season. But I know he's going to work hard in the offseason, so he's just going to get better. Do you want to yeah. see him still stuck in Austin for the rest of the season, or do you expect him to be stable to the San Antonio bench soon? That's a good question because, look, let's be honest. The Spurs right now, they're really not going nowhere. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be a, a decision, I think, that's going to be up to Coach Pop. At some point in time, you don't want to make you don't want to make it known that you're tanking. You know, they, the Spurs, that's not the Spurs' way. But if your team's not going anywhere, why not call up mm-hmm. the young guard, the rookie? And give him some real minutes, you know, yeah. kind of throw him into the fire, see what he can do. He, he might surprise uh, the coaching staff and Coach Pop because, like I said, I, I think this kid, he, he can really be a solid addition. So I would I would hope that Coach Pop would go ahead and put him into the rotation, mm-hmm. maybe even especially after that all-star break, you know, when they finish with the rodeo road trip and all that. I mean, if they're not going any, anywhere, I mean, give the kids some run. And really, Coach Pop should do that with not just Blake Wesley, but the other young young guns as well. Just give them run. Mm-hmm. Give them some mad love. Give them some run. What do you got to lose? You know, if you lose, that's good for business because let's be honest, the Spurs want that first pick. The, the mm, prize well, they is do. Handy, you know? Yes, so, they do. Yeah. I'm looking at some of the numbers and, you know, like for any rookie, even Sohan, even Malachi. You know, there's always room for improvement, but we're talking about Wesley right now, and that three-point shot is just a little down, 30, 33% through eight games right now with the Austin Spurs. He's taking about five a game, nearly five, 4.5, and he's only making about one or two. That's got to get better. And one thing you have to keep in mind about the G League is some of these numbers can be skewed because they let players kind of experiment with their own game. hate to bring this guy's name up, but... Josh Primo, you know, when he was in the G League, I remember him telling me the Spurs want me to, uh, you know, facilitate more. And you would see his turnovers high with Austin. Even Brent Forbes, I remember talking to Brent Forbes years ago when he was in the G League with San Antonio and saying, I'm not a point guard, but their Spurs are telling me to run the point in Austin. So you see a lot of players experiment. So you got to take these numbers in consideration. However, Joe, his shot needs work, 33% from the from the uh, three line. And then just his overall shooting, 38% needs work. I mean, that's on the G League. And no knock on the G League because it should be better. Uh, turnovers are an issue, two, three, a game. His assists are 2.5. That's a bad assist to turnover ratio, Joe. Joe, is this just simply kind of, you know, the trials and tribulations of a young point guard just trying to find his way in the NBA. Yeah, not only trying to find his way, but let's be honest. I mean, he's coming back from injury as well. So we don't know how he is. Is he still at 100%? Is he still rehabbing? You know, um, there's a a big question mark on that, you know, especially when players get hurt. Takes them a little bit of time to really get back into the swing of things and really Mm -hmm. feeling like their true selves, you know. So him being in the G League, that's all going to, you know, attribute to him getting back to true form, you know, before his injury. So, you know, it's just something that he's just got to push through. And, you know, his numbers aren't really standing out at you. But I mean, when you look at the games and you see what the kid can do, shows a lot of promise. 
You know, he's averaging nearly 18 points per game, and I find this interesting. Half of his points come from the paint. He's averaging about nine points in the paint. So he's attacking that rim, and that's great. I like to see that attack, attack, attack. We saw that in, in, in Las Vegas in his summer league debut. But, again, if you're finishing at the rim, you know, maybe you're, 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 you should be also picking up free throws and free throw attempts. And his free throw attempts, three a game. That's it. You know, I like to see that number climb a little bit. So we'll that, another room for improvement. Joe, I, I definitely need to see him in San Antonio sooner than later. You you hit a hit a hit on it. It's it's a down season. It's pointless. The season's already over. Hate to break it to you for everybody listening right now. <laughs> the rest the rest of the season is just a glorified training camp. That's all it really is. Uh, and you, the bigger prize is the draft, whether it be the number one, number two, or number three pick. So what do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose. Play him. Even even if you split time with Trey Jones or or who was the other guard on the uh, the roster, you know. Uh, Josh uh, Josh Richardson. I know he doesn't he's not listed as a guard, but he plays the, at the guard spot. You just do it, Malachi Branham. You know, split time with him. You, there's there's got there's a will, there's a way to get him burned. Joe, he needs to get on that San Antonio uh, bench soon, right? Yeah, he does. You know, like I said, I mean, they're they're really not playing for much at this point. I mean, what's the Spurs' record now? They've only won what fourteen games. They're fourteen and thirty four. And we're more than halfway through the season. I mean, the numbers, when you go ahead and average them out, they're not in the Spurs' favor. They're really not going anywhere. They're not going to be playing for the play-in game, let's be honest. you know. And then they're going to go and hit the, the road pretty soon here with the rodeo road trip. I believe that's going to start February the 9th, I believe, or February the 6th. Um, and, you know, once that happens, I mean, I don't think it's going to bode well for, for the Spurs. We're not expecting them to be world beaters on the road i mean let's be mm-hmm. honest they're not playing very well in san antonio and they're not playing very well on the road either so i mean Absolutely. it is what it is i mean if coach pop wants to just throw the kid in the fire let him you know i mean that's what i would i would i would, I would yeah i, I definitely know? would i agree with you yeah sink or swim go for go figure it out but yeah. it's definitely to see uh what's going to happen with wesley as the season continues uh we're not done talking when we get back we're going to catch you up on some Spurs news and notes that you may have missed with Joe Garcia of Two Shots Podcast. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about FanDuel. Look, we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today. Get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up today at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. It's all on an app. It's safe. It's secure. It's super easy to use. So fans, don't, don't miss out. You definitely don't want to miss this out. Your first five bucks, if that, that first $5 bet, that'll get you $150 in free bets, win or lose. At fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NFL. We're back with Joe Garcia right here on Locked On Spurs. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast and hit him up for some free rounds of beer because he's making the bucks now. All these jobs he's making, man. You're making some bank, Joe. Good job. Well, yeah. I mean, I got to make money because I got to uh, put a daughter through, through college, man. And let me tell oh. you. The yeah. tuition at UTSA ain't cheap, Jeff. Really? I always thought, like, was it, is it, that's still true? Like, if you stay in state, you know, it's cheaper for, you know, kids. Is that still true or not? It's probably cheaper if they stay in state. Yeah. But still, yeah. the tuition is expensive. Putting anybody through college yeah, is expensive. Imagine. And my daughter is currently living in the dorms. So I got to pay for that along with tuition and meals and all the other miscellaneous stuff. I'm just like getting hit up for cash just about every week and not including buying her groceries every week. You know, it's like my, 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 my hand is out. My hand is out right now. I need about 20 bucks, Joe. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I might have to take a loan out to get the $20. That's why I got more than one job. <laughs> <laughs> he is Joe Garcia. We're talking about all things silver and black. Joe, let's catch up everybody up with some Spurs news and notes. Now, are, you know, I know you and I are old guys, you know, our, our, our era is the late seventies, you know, growing up in the eighties. 
But were you a fan of Phineas and Ferb, the 90s cartoon? Of course, man. My kids used to watch that all the time. So um, well, I know exactly where this is going because I saw the picture. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you did you catch this? Spurs fans, Joe, the creator of Phineas and Ferb, uh, noticed something peculiar about the Spurs Fiesta Court. Now, in that same show, there's a character um, that's based on, a, I think it's called Perry the Platypus. Perry, yeah. And, yeah. And that platypus has the exact same color scheme as the Spurs Fiesta Court. So the creator decided to get funny and uh, kind of draw over the Spurs Fiesta Court, like the paint area, the free throw line and the, and, and the paint, and put in the two eyeballs, the, the fedora yeah. cap that the platypus is known for, and voila, it's Perry the Platypus. I hope the Spurs do that just for fun. Like, draw on there, like put the paint it over, that just for the kids. That'd be fun to see, Joe. It'd be fun, but I don't think the House of the Mouse would be happy with that, Jeff. Oh, man, that's <laughs> right. You think you think, you think that, that mouse will come at us? Oh, no doubt. No doubt he'll come at you. Uh, it'd be funny if the, the coyote kind of plays up to that, but Better be very careful because Disney yeah, yeah. does not play games. Yeah, Disney doesn't play games. Yeah, but speaking of playing games, how would you like to own a piece of a Hall of Famer during his playing days? If you ever wanted to own a piece of Spurs history, you got yourself a chance. Spurs Give is auctioning autograph memorabilia from Manu Ginobili, and it's starting soon. Oh, as a matter of fact, it started already. It's, it's up and running. There's an online auction that's going to end on February 8th. All proceeds of the auction will benefit Spurs Give and help expand the Spurs Youth Basketball League. Uh, there's uh, signed jerseys from Manu. There's game-worn jerseys from Manu. Basically, the game-worn ones are uh, the white association jerseys, basically the home, the traditional home whites. There's autographed prints of Ginobili, a couple of them. I, I, it, you, you think Spurs fans will buy will bid on some of this stuff because this is some good stuff joe especially if you're a hardcore collector oh yeah man you know i think one of my good friends is probably going to be betting on that stuff shout out to you taro katani he's always buying spurs memorabilia and autographed you know jerseys and whatnot so i'm sure he's going to probably put in his bid to buy at least one or two of those manu ginobili signed jerseys when are we going to get the joe garcia signed jersey auction Oh man, nobody wants my jersey. My jersey ain't worth nothing. I'm not. I'm not playing. Come on, <laughs> come well, on, we're just Joe. Talking heads, Jeff. We're just talking heads. Joe, come on. We got to see the Joe Garcia game worn division uh, street south side uh, jersey that you wore back in the day. No, I, mean, I think I threw that thing away, Jeff, because it stunk. <laughs> <laughs> the hot summer <laughs> here in San Antonio. No matter how much you wash your jersey. That's part of the allure. You want to go out there and just rub that ugly stink on everybody. That way they just leave you alone, you know? Ugh, Street I, rules, I remember yeah. those days. <laughs> Street rules is right. Street rules. And finally, another Spurs news. Actually, not necessarily news, but a take from Joe Garcia. Joe, you heard and saw and watched the uh, Stephen Jackson, DeJounte Murray chat. Uh, what were your thoughts about that? Uh, you think uh, Murray... Uh, was just speaking his truth, which he, you know, in his mind it was, but we know what did you walk away from? I mean, he's speaking his truth. That's he's, he's being honest saying, this is how he felt, you know, and let's be honest, man. When you're going onto a podcast, what's it called? All that smoke, you know, yeah. or all the smoke, uh, with, uh, <laughs> Captain, Captain Jack, Jack. Captain Jackson. Yeah. I mean, he has a history too, of just mouthing off and saying, horrendous stuff you know but let's face the facts are captain jab couldn't keep his mouth shut that's why he's no longer he, he was no longer with the san antonio spurs you know he was being disrespectful i mean now. you go back and look at the history on that you'll, you'll find out why they let him go but regardless you know when you have you know you invite Dejounte because Dejounte probably heard what captain jack was saying about the spurs and he's like well i feel that way too so he came out and he said his truth but the Spurs still, regardless of how he felt, and he was saying, you know, he felt a certain way because they went ahead and drafted an Argentinian uh, guard. Mm -hmm. they, they winded up, the guy didn't even make the season. They winded up waving him. So why is he crying about that? 
You know, it's like, I get that you might have felt some sort of way, like, why are they drafting another guard? But at the end of the day, the Spurs helped develop DeJounte and make him the player that he is today. You know, they Mm -hmm. helped him do that. You know, and I'm sure that he has respect and admiration for Coach Pop and the Spurs, but he's just saying, this is how they played me, you know, and but I just think that's just him. That's just his personality. He even went on Twitter and he was coming back at the fans and he was saying, you know, I didn't say anything bad about the team. I'm just telling you how I felt. And, you know, fans were going at him and he knows that. I think he's just kind of stirring the pot, much like our our good friend Jimenez likes to do, you know, to to just, you know, get those get people talking. It's not a bad thing, you know, to stir the pot. It's good. It gets the conversation going, you know, and he knows that the, that game that's coming up against the Spurs and the Hawks, that's going to be something that's going to be a hot ticket. And he wants that attention on, on that game. So, I mean, yeah, he says things that Spurs fans don't agree with, but that's his truth. It's kind of clownish in my opinion, but again, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. You're not entitled to your own facts. You know, that's what I always say, but I think he's just hyping things up. He's, he knows that Spurs fans are going to, go out and boo him. And you know, what's going to be really interesting to me, Jeff, what's going to what's happen that? when they play that tribute video. <laughs> They're going to get, know? he's like, to get booed no matter what. I, I think, yeah. I, I know I, I'm pretty sure it's coming. Brace for it, everybody. It's in March. And that's the only time DeJounte will be in San Antonio in a Hawks uniform. You're going to be there. So I hope so. I hope Are you so. Gonna boo? I can't boo. I'll be sitting for the oh, press row. That's one thing gotta, that you have to go and watch it as a fan, Jeff. I can't. I can't. I got to sit there and be quiet <laughs> in my press seat. But yeah, it's, it definitely stirred the pot among the silver and black fans. But I just want to get your thoughts since you've been away from Lockdown Spurs for a bit. But hey, everybody, we're done talking. We want to hear from you. What do you think about Sohan? Should he get or will he get that invite to the NBA Rising Stars Challenge for All-Star 2023? What about Blake Wesley? He got recalled, but what do you think about his play in Austin? How do you like his development so far? And are you going to hit up Joe Garcia for a round of beer because he's making the bucks? We need to know. Joe, tell us all about Two Shots. What's going on? Well, I hope to get back on the horse here and start recording an episode sometime this week with Two Shots. Reaching out to some guests so we can go ahead and talk some San Antonio Spurs basketball once again. And, you know, start releasing some new episodes. I hope to start now that I'm, I am I got a, a, a schedule now with work. I can release more than one episode per week because I also do some other podcasts uh, producing. And then I'm part of another geeky podcast, which is called the Countdown City Geek Cast that we record every Monday. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm really busy, man. I'm trying to balance everything. But I think I'm in a good place right now. You know, let's uh, let, let me see if I can get me a one or two Red Bulls in me, and that'll keep me going, Jeff. Man, that's my weakness. You put a Red Bull in front of me, I'll drink it. Oh, I, I know, but Bulls. then you'll be jittery the rest of the day. That's all right. I'd rather be awake, alert, and everything ready to go in case something happens. Do you even, take the Red when... Bull when you go before you work out or after? Uh, before. And during. Oh. And during. And here's the thing, too. Even when I go out with friends, like recently we had like a big, very, very small meetup uh, in San Antonio to watch the Cowboys game. Everything I got had Red Bull in it, Red 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 Bull vodka, Red Bull bourbon. Like I just, I just like the taste of it, oh, and it, it just keeps me awake. I love it. Enough about my drinking habits and my uh, alcoholism. We want to hear from you, everybody. <laughs> so again, Joe told you how you can follow him. You can follow me on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. Subscribe to Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your podcast, including the Ken's Five Plus app and many other spots. Be on the lookout. Ken's Five will be having a Spurs special show program and Lockdown Spurs will be talked about. So check it out. Also, don't forget to check out NBA Game to Game right here on the Lockdown NBA Network. Every highlight, every recap that you want, check it out at Game to Game NBA on the Lockdown Network. So for Joe Garcia, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. Mm-hmm.